Hey everyone, my name is Lonic Q, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to play every single Spyro game on PC. Well, almost. Before we begin, I want to make a few things clear. Number one, this video will cover most of the Spyro games except the mobile games and Skylanders. There's already a video out there covering how to set up the Skylanders games, so I will link that in the description instead. Secondly, this video won't show you how to obtain these games legally or illegally. That's all up to you. Thirdly, I will also include the Legend of Spyro games in this video, just in case people haven't seen the setup video I made about it. If you've already seen that video, then you can just skip that section as a whole, because there's no new information to talk about when it comes to that subject. This video also expects you to have some form of knowledge of how emulators work. In case you don't, I will link guides to each emulator I will talk about in this video, which is the Dolphin Emulator, the Emulator Duck Station, the MGBA Emulator, the Melon DS Emulator, RPCS Free, and the Senior Canary Emulator. It's very important that it's the Senior Canary version and not the regular version. Trust me, it's very important. This video also expects you to have some form of knowledge of how computers work. You don't need to be a mastermind at it, just knowing how it works, that's all you really need. And finally, I want to state that as a human being, I can make mistakes, so if you see a mistake I made in this video, then please tell me in the comments. With all of this out of the way, let's get started. Timestamps and chapters will be down where the video player is. However, I should say that if you're going to configure the GameCube games, make sure to watch this section first before you configure the actual games themselves. Now, let's start with the original Spyro Trilogy. For the original Spyro Trilogy, the best emulator for them is the PlayStation emulator Duck Station. Duck Station allows us to use cheat codes on certain games. They are obviously mostly for cheats, but also to change games in other technical ways like play them in widescreen. And that is definitely possible with all of the first free Spyro games. Here's how to enable it. When launching one of the games, double click the screen if you're in full screen mode and on the top page you will see a cheat section. Scroll through the cheat section till you find the widescreen cheat. Enable it, reset the game just in case and it should work. It's also important to have this setting enabled, or else when you turn the camera, things won't load correctly. And that's it for the Spyro Trilogy. Very simple if you ask me. After these messages, we'll be right back. Before we move on to the GameCube Spyro games, we have to talk about something important that has to do with the said GameCube games, that being Gecko Codes. If you don't know what a Gecko Code is, they're basically cheat codes to, well, obviously cheat through games, but also technically modify them to, for example, play them in widescreen or even 60fps. AKA almost exactly like Duck Station, except for GameCube games and Wii games. However, the difference is that we have to input the codes ourselves, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple, it's not complicated at all. In the description of this video, there will be codes for each GameCube and Wii Spyro game I will cover in this video. In order to add a code for a specific game, right click on the game and click on Properties. Go over to the Gecko Codes tab and click on Add Code. Paste the code where it should be and give it a title and boom, that's how you put in Gecko Codes. This will be relevant for the next two Spyro games and two of the Legend of Spyro games, so that's why I'm explaining it. Spyro Into the Dragonfly has a lot of issues, and by a lot of issues, I mean a lot of issues. It's quite well known that this game was heavily rushed out the door, and because of that, there's a lot of performance problems and just a lot of problems with the game overall. And while we can't fix the soulless features of Enter the Dragonfly, at least compared to other Spyro games, we definitely can, finally, fix the performance issues. The best version of Enter the Dragonfly is the GameCube version being played on Dolphin, and it's the best by a huge margin, and I'm gonna explain why. 
Before we begin, however, if this is a game that you plan on playing regularly, I highly recommend downloading a separate version of Dolphin and making it portable. The reason why is because of a setting they have to turn on and off every time you switch to a different game. There are three big main enhancements we can make to this game on this emulator. The first one, and honestly least impressive one, being a proper widescreen mode. The game does have a widescreen mode, but it's ass in a lot of ways, and this Gecko code fixes that. Copy this Gecko code, which will be in the description down below, paste it into the Dolphin Gecko code tab, and this will make the game display properly. You might see that it's a little stretched at first, but all you have to do is go to the options menu, toggle on the widescreen, and while you're there, turn off the hints because that's really gonna annoy you if you don't, and voila, now it looks natural. The next thing we're going to improve on, or in this case, pretty much remove, are the load times. Enter the Dragonfly is pretty notorious for its bad load times, but it's super easy to fix on Dolphin. Right click on Enter the Dragonfly and go to Properties and make sure that emulate disk speed is not checked. This will make it so that the game loads super fast, and to my knowledge, there are almost no downsides to this. Just check out this comparison right here. You will see a huge difference in the time. The final and the biggest change we're going to make is fix the frame rate. Enter the Dragonfly strives for a 60 FPS speed, but on normal consoles it fails miserably at it. But with the power of emulation, it can be fixed. What we're going to do is overclock the GameCube's emulated CPU. Now don't worry, we're not gonna overclock your actual CPU in your computer, but the GameCube's emulated CPU on Dolphin. All it really means is that Dolphin is going to require a little bit more power from your computer, but it should be just fine on any setup. However, if you do notice that your computer is slowing down, then maybe your computer can't handle the overclock of the emulated GameCube CPU. This is also the reason why you should set up Enter the Dragonfly on a different version of Dolphin. Enter the Dragonfly is one of the few games on GameCube to have its frame rate improved by the overclock instead of the game annoyingly speeding up. And it's really easy to forget to uncheck the overclock CPU option. So when you go into another game and see that everything is sped up, you might be confused to what is going on. That is why I recommend downloading a separate version of Dolphin just for Enter the Dragonfly or other games that increase the frame rate the same way via overclocking. There's a great video out there showing you how to set up a portable version of Dolphin. This will let you have your main version of Dolphin and your new portable version of Dolphin on the same computer without overlapping each other. That video will of course be linked in the description down below. Anyways, in order to enable the emulated CPU overclock, click on the config tab, then in the config tab, go over to the advanced tab, and then you will see the emulate CPU override. Check that and I recommend setting the overclock to 300% just in case. From my experience, it only requires a little more juice from your computer. And I do mean a little. After doing all of this and booting the game up, you should see that the loading screens are lightning fast and so is the game's FPS. You might see the game hang up when you're saving your game, but don't worry, it's normal. It's just taking its time. I hope this will fix Enter the Dragonfly for a lot of people especially since a mod for the game is coming pretty soon that aims to fix other issues with the game. If you want to check out the trailer for the mod, link will be in the description of this video. A Hero's Tale at first really divided me on which version I should recommend, because both versions are extremely similar to one another and feature only little differences here and there. In the end, I decided to consult the main Hero's Tale Discord server known as Red's Laboratory, who guided me to the best version of a Hero's Tale that's out there, but also helped me with my research on the setup of Enter the Dragonfly. So a huge thank you to these guys for helping me with the research of this video. If you have a huge interest in the hero's tale and have for a long time, then I highly recommend joining the Discord yourself. 
Link will be in the description down below. So anyway, back to A Hero's Tale. The best version of A Hero's Tale that's out there is currently the GameCube version being played on Dolphin. According to the server, there aren't many changes, but the game does have a higher audio quality on the GameCube version. The PS2 version is not as good, and the Xbox version is generally the best on normal consoles, but definitely not on PC emulation as of now. Xbox emulation is still early in development compared to the other two systems, so we're going with the GameCube on this one. There's thankfully not much to configure with the GameCube version, with the exception of two Gecko codes. The first code is for playing the game in widescreen, and the other code is sort of an add-on code to the first code, which makes the HUD and UI elements not super stretched. Though the second code has the unfortunate downsides of screwing things up like the pre-rendered loading screens due to their original 4x3 aspect ratio. If this is something that annoys you, then you can just ignore the second code, but the first code works almost perfectly fine on its own. However, I should mention that the GameCube version of this game made the absolute dumb decision of placing the fire button on the Y button. Yeah, the Y button. I mean, having fire on Square was bad enough in the PS2 version, but this is even worse in so many ways. If this bothers you, then you can just switch around with your controller profile or straight up create a new one. For the Game Boy Advance games, the best emulator is MGBA. That's it. There's not really anything else to mention, at least emulator-wise. It's pretty easy to set up. It's just like setting up something like an NES or SNES emulator. Though there is one game I want to talk about in particular, that game being Spyro Season of Ice. The first GBA Spyro game, Spyro Season of Ice, actually has a ROM hack called Spyro Season of Ice DX. This is a ROM hack of the game that makes a lot of quality of life changes. I've never played Season of Ice, but I'm gonna read what the ROM hack changes and improves. The fare requirement to reach the final boss has been reduced to 90 instead of collecting all of the fairies in the game. All maps in the game have been adjusted to mark the location of all flammable objects with an X. All fairy homeworlds now mark the entrances to other areas with portal graphics ripped from Spyro Season of Flame, which makes it easier to find other areas. Susan's dialogue in the lava... prairie... whatever, has been adjusted to make mention of the map feature and to explain the purpose of the exes. The professor's dialogue in the Halt the Honeymaking Task in Honey Marsh has been adjusted to be more specific as what the player needs to do. The previous hint towards charging was somewhat misleading as it could cause the bees to despawn if they fell too far behind. And finally, the ROM hack includes minor grammatical fixes. So if you have played Season of Ice and you think this looks cool, then here's how to get it. You will need a copy of Spyro Season of Ice, a program called Lunar IPS to patch the game, and the patch itself, that patch being Spyro Season of Ice DX. Something that is worth mentioning, though I'm not sure if this is actually the case, uh, you might need the Japanese version of the game in order to patch the actual game. I tried with the US version and it didn't work for me. I don't know if it was bad luck or if the US version is incompatible, but from what it seems like you need the Japanese version. The link to the patch will be down in the description down below, and I will also link Lunar IPS in the description as well. And in case you don't know what Lunar IPS is, it's basically a program to patch older NES games and SNES games in order to play ROM hacks. And in this case, the GBA. I also highly recommend that you make a copy of Season of Ice just in case anything fails for you or you want to play the original at some point again. Once you have all of these things, open Lunar IPS and click on Apply Patch. Find the Season of Ice DX patch and double click on it. After that, another window will pop up which means that you now have to just find the game. Find the game and double click on it and then you will be done. You might get another window popping up asking you where the new ROM file should be, but it, except for that, you should be good. And that is it for the Spyro GBA games. For the DS games, the best emulator for the job is Melon DS. And just like MGBA, it's extremely simple to set up. Though we do sort of have a problem on our hands. 
Because of the DS being the DS, all of these games use the touchscreen in some capacity, which you can't do on a controller, which means in order to use your touchscreen, you will have to use your mouse. Though it's honestly not as bad as it sounds. Maybe there's a program or something out there that can make the right stick act like the mouse just for this application, but I'm really not good with those kinds of programs at all. But even with this setup, this should be totally playable and hopefully enjoyable as well, of course. Though obviously, you can still control the actual game using your controller, of course. The best version of A New Beginning that is out there is, in my opinion, the GameCube version. The GameCube version on its emulator Dolphin will allow you to play the game at 60fps. The PS2 version actually allows you to play the game at 120fps, though it's not perfect and I'm not at all good with PCSX2 the way I am with Dolphin, so for this video, I'm using Dolphin. A New Beginning is actually one of the few GameCube games out there to already have a widescreen mode within the game without having to use additional codes. Speaking of codes, the way we're going to achieve 60fps is via a gecko code. If you don't know what a gecko code is, they are basically codes that you can enable to change certain small aspects of GameCube games. Think of them as another form of cheat codes like Action Replay. In the description of this video, you will see a section called Gecko Codes, with one code for a new beginning and Eternal Night. These are codes that will make the games play at 60fps. Here's how to activate them. Copy each respective code for each respective game. Once you are in Dolphin, right-click on a new beginning or Eternal Night and click on Properties. Go over to the Gecko Codes tab and click on Add New Code. Paste the code where it's supposed to be and give it a name, so you know it's the right code. And there we go. You might see a message beforehand about disabling cheats, so... So if you have not enabled cheats, then it's recommended to do so. And after that, everything is set up with a new beginning. There's only one glitch that happens due to the 60fps code, where one cutscene will be kinda of fucked up, but except for that, it's pretty good. It doesn't really crash or anything from what I've seen, and it seems pretty decent. Though for Eternal Night, we have one final step we need to do. We have to set up our controls, which is more complicated than setting up, for example, a new beginnings controls, since that just requires the GameCube controller. You can play Eternal Night using your real Wii mode with nunchuck and motion controls, or you can set up the controller you usually use, like an Xbox One controller, for example. If you are using a normal controller, go over to the Controllers tab, go down to the Wii section, and set Player 1 to Emulated Wiimote. Obviously, if you have a real Wiimote, then set it as a real Wiimote, but this tutorial is going to assume that you are using a normal controller. Otherwise, there will be a guide on how to connect your Wiimote in the description as well. Click on Configure. Look to the right where it says Extension. Change it from None to Wii Classic Controller. Now go over to the Extension tab and input the controls that fits your controller. This is usually the layout I recommend for the most popular controllers out there. Make sure to also calibrate the left and right stick, just in case. With that done, go back over to the General and Options tab and set a button you haven't used yet to the A button on the Wiimote. This is just in case the game demands input from the Wiimote and not the Classic Controller. When all the buttons are set, go over to the box in the top right and type in a name for the profile. Click Save and then click Load just in case and it should work. If you have multiple Wii games with other control styles, then I recommend setting a hotkey that changes the profile that you're using. There are three main contenders of what version of Dawn of the Dragon you should play. If you have a decent computer and have similar specs to mine, then the RPCS3 and Cinea Canary versions are the best versions out there. However, if you don't have that powerful of a computer, then the PS2 version is still a good version of the game. I don't recommend the Wii version at all due to forced motion controls, unless that is something you want. For this segment, I am going to focus on the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions. There are pros and cons with each version. 
The Xbox 360 version doesn't look as good, but you can play the game in whatever frame rate your computer can handle, aka over 60 FPS. The PS3 versions can have textures be rendered at higher resolutions than 720p. This version of the game also has optional dog shit motion controls if you want to play around with them for some reason. And it can technically play the game at over 60 FPS, but the emulator crashes for me for some reason. I'll make a pinned comment under this video in the future if I have found a fix for this. Whatever the case, if you don't care for any of these changes, then choose based on what system you're most interested in and in which part of your computer is better. RPCS Free favors the usage of your CPU, while Senior Canary favors the usage of your GPU. If you don't know what to choose, then I would just go with Senior Canary. It's sort of a safe bet. If you have decided which emulator you're going with, then please skip to one of these time codes listed here. The best settings for the Senia Canary version is in your config file. Open the folder where you have Senia, and you should see a config file. If you do not see it, then try booting the game up once, close it, and then go back into the folder. Open the config file with a notepad. The settings we want to change are the audio settings and the video settings. The audio settings are the first thing you see and they are at the top of the page. Set max queued frames to free. This makes it so you're not getting any audio delay. However, don't put it any lower than free or you might fuck up the emulator. Next are the video settings which are lower down in the notepad file. We're going to start with the resolution. The highest you can set it to is 1080p. The next setting we're going to change is VSync. If you have a high refresh rate monitor, aka 1 over 60 Hz, then set it to off. But if you don't and you have a normal 60 Hz monitor, then set it to on. And that's it for Senia. If you notice that the graphics are fucked up in the tile screen, it's normal. Hit F5 and it will fix the texture glitches. You have to press it every time you start the game up, but after that it's smooth sailing. If you notice that your PC is more hot and loud than usual, and you experience lag with your computer, try to reduce some of the settings or play the PS2 version if it turns out your computer can't handle this version of the game. For RPCS Free, right click on Dawn of the Dragon in the program and go to Properties. After that, just copy these settings. If the game doesn't load, then perhaps changing the video driver will fix the trick. It has happened with me a few times. If you notice that your PC is more hot and loud than usual, and you experience lag with your computer, then try to reduce some of the settings or play the PS2 version if it turns out your computer can't handle this version of the game. And that is finally it for the video. A lot of games for this one, I gotta say. I wanna again give my thanks to the Heroes Tale Discord server, Red's Laboratory, for helping me with the GameCube games in this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope it helped you play the games in the best way possible, and in the case of Enter the Dragonfly, making it playable at all. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. See you guys then.